Yo viewers, I'm Dark Pins, and this is my game Dojardin, it's a RPG bullet hell, and in the process of making my game, I had to come up with a bullet hell system in order to create interesting and complex patterns of bullets, and so I decided to create a bullet hell plugin that uh, all of you can use to create bullet hell games. It's called Bullet of Hell, and if you're making a bullet hell game with Godot, this is what you need. It takes care of everything related to bullet spawning, patterns, bullet properties, event triggering, and it has a lot of uh, very advanced features. Basically, my goal was to make it so it's able to recreate any bullet pattern from any bullet hell game, and yeah, you can do it. So in this video, I'm gonna go through the installation steps uh, and all the basics to get you started with the plugin. It also has a full documentation. Everything is explained here, but I, I had uh, a lot of requests to make a video tutorial about it, so that's what I'm gonna do. Right before we start, I just wanna say that you can play the demo of my game with the link in the description. It's a RPG bullet hell, except that you, the player, cannot shoot bullets. You have a sword, and you have to get into melee fight with all the enemies shooting bullets. It's free, and it's a lot of fun. So we're going to start with the installation process. You can get it on the Godot Asset Library, or you can go on the GitHub page. Um, select the Godot version. We're going to create a new project. Now, this project doesn't have an add-on folder. So we're going to create one. We're going to rename that. And move it. Okay, now we have the plugin here. You can see installation steps, we've downloaded, we've created the add-ons folder, we extracted the zip, the name is bullet hell, we are going to not open an example scene, now we are going to enable the plugin. Spawning, you can see, is already set as an autoload. It's automatic. If it's not automatic, then you can add it uh, by selecting. Normally, it should work. Uh, maybe on the Godot 3 version, it doesn't work. Uh, I don't remember. But you can select, and then you you just add here, and you're gonna have you're gonna have that. Spawning is an auto load, and we're gonna restart the editor. Okay, stop. Okay, now we can open the example scenes and we can play them. So now you can see uh, everything here is part uh, of the plugin and uh, you can see the result here, you can see how it's made here. Uh, at this point you have all the nodes, uh, you can search them by name and add them here. We can create ourselves something, um, just a thing 2D, we're gonna add 
we're going to need a spawn pattern. We are going to need a bullet pattern. And we might need a spawn point. You can you can put uh, all of these nodes anywhere in the scene or in an auto load or absolutely everywhere you want. Spawn pattern are going to determine where the bullet will spawn. So here you have the, the different spawn pattern types. Uh, it can spawn here in, uh, in a circle or in a line or you can here draw your own shapes. Um, there's also a lot of customization. We are not going to go over everything in this video, but know that uh, it's made so you can reproduce any bullet pattern from any game, uh, any bullet hell game. Uh, everything can be made with all of this, uh, all of these variables. You have a little bit more of example customization here. I see that's a, a line pattern but it's been modified to take a different shape you can you have cooldowns too um, different types of cooldowns then there's the bullet pattern the bullet pattern is going to determine um, the bullet properties how the bullet will act um, the, direction, everything related to movement, um, any properties. Um, we got some examples here. Everything uh, about the bullet here, it's, uh, it's moving uh, with a sinus function, for example, and everything about the, the customization can be um, modified with the bullet pattern uh, a lot as you can see. And everything is described uh, in the documentation. Uh, also, you get homing. Um, triggers. Um, we might not talk about that in this video, but you have a node um, especially for triggering events related to bullets. So for example, quickly go over that. For example, when uh, this bullet uh, reach uh, the target, it's gonna create more bullets and you can, you can, uh, it's very flexible. You can create a lot of things with that. You can get all of the, all of the variables. Uh, the one in red are the one we're gonna need to absolutely fill. Uh, basically, the ID. The ID is very important. Uh, the ID is the reason why you can put these nodes anywhere and it's still gonna work. Um, you have to reference all the nodes, um, give them an ID, and then you reference this ID uh, anywhere else. So, um, the spawn point, we can start with that. So, the, the spawn point is the origin uh, where the bullets are gonna spawn. I'm gonna put it in the middle. Um, it's gonna need a pattern. So we need to go to the pattern and give it an ID. It can be a number, it can be uh, any any string. Uh, if you have a big game, you probably want to, to give some meaningful names. Uh, here we're just gonna tell one. Um, you're gonna reference this ID, one. And now um, the spawn point is going to be connected to the, the spawn pattern. So you're going to see if we miss an ID and we run, it, it gives an error. It's simply to remind you that you need to, to give an ID. Um, so we're going to link, link it. Um, so now this spawn point is always gonna reference the spawn pattern. Um, but now if we if we run it, we still have a problem, a different problem because there's something else lacking, and that's um, the pattern resource. 
we're gonna need to choose from one of those uh, don't mind this one does nothing um, we're gonna put a pattern circle now if you run you get a bullet great but we're gonna do something a little more fancy we're gonna um, get five bullets uh, with a different radius like 200 um, and yeah we're gonna start with that and boom very easy very simple um, but maybe we want the bullets to do something a bit different um, so we're gonna get this pattern we're gonna increase the, the speed for example uh, maybe have uh, double the scale and we're gonna give it an ID so you can reference it uh, I'm gonna just say one and then I'm gonna tell the pattern here that we need the bullet with the ID one and here we are so that's the basic spawning you have a spawn, a spawn point referencing a pattern, referencing a bullet. And of course you can get several spawn points. All referencing the same pattern. So you don't have to, um, to change, um, to create a new pattern each time you want to create a new spawner, for example or to create a new bullet each time you want to create a new pattern. So something that has been requested a lot is for me to explain um, how to use the plugin by code instead of with the nodes, um, because it's completely possible. Um, first, we're gonna try to get rid of the spawn point. So we're gonna add a script to the scene. And in the documentation, you can find uh, the special functions that you can call and that are useful, uh, especially the spawn function, which is the main one. We're gonna need um, the node who's gonna be spawning the bullet, the pattern ID, and something I'm gonna explain right now. So we're gonna call the So first we need a node. So technically we could use the spawning node. Um, basically what you why do you need a node? Um, it's because it's for the position, of course, it's the origin position. Um, it's for the rotation, everything about the, the transformation. But you can also... So, spat, um, spawner here uh, can be a node, like I just uh, explained, um, but it can also be a dictionary. And if it's a dictionary, you need simply to create a dictionary with a position and a rotation. So we can do that. Um, we're gonna set that to um, 200, 200, for example, and rotation, uh, whatever. So we're gonna need to call um, the ID of the spawner. Here it's one. And then we need something that I called um, the shared area name. So what is a shared area? A shared area. Um, you can find them here. So it's simply um, the area 2D, which is gonna be used for um, the collision, um, the, 
recursion properties, um, mainly the layer and the mask. So for example, um, if a bullet collides with something, it's gonna use this layer and this mask. By default, uh, every bullet is gonna use this one, but you can change it. If you see in spawn point, you can change the shared area name by default zero, but you can add one uh, and change to any name. It can be one, whatever. And then you can change whatever the collision is. And now it's gonna use those properties. Um, if you if you call it, so by default you would say zero, but I I just created a new one. So I'm gonna call it first because it's the name. The name act uh, as the ID. So as you can see, it had um, the position and well, it's maybe with a circle, you don't see the rotation. We can try a line. Uh, we don't forget to put the ID, which was one and for example, four. And you can see that, uh, oh yeah, I need to put the offset. And you can see that it had a, a rotation, uh, which would be different than if you put zero. Yep. Um, it's in radian, by the way, not in, uh, not in degrees. So that's how to get rid of a spawner node. So now maybe you want to get rid of the spawn pattern node. Uh, we're going to create a new pattern line property. Okay. We're going to call spawning new pattern. So new pattern is going to register a new pattern we are going to give it an ID and we are going to give it um, the resource. So here we still have one. Um, and so the resource is the new pattern. Maybe we want to change the, the properties of this pattern. So you're going to change that. For example, offset is um, um, four, four, um, we need to, to set a bullet, of course, a bullet ID. We're still keeping the one and maybe a number. Mm -hmm. Maybe something a bit more, a bit greater. Uh, so you change the properties just like you would change it uh, in the in the inspector. Don't forget to set the ID. And now if we run it, we didn't change anything. That's normal because we need to, to set a, another ID that um, because this this still has the ID one, so it didn't it didn't register a new one. You need to create a new ID and yep uh, well you don't see much here but <laughs> it's there so that's how you replace um, a spawning node and that's how you replace a resource um, to replace a bullet pattern it's a bit more complicated that you wouldn't do that um, because there's a lot of things for optimization that's going on 
in the node. Maybe I should add a function for that. Um, but right now it's better that you keep um, the bullet pattern node. Other things that might be important, if you have a scene, for example, an enemy with uh, bullet patterns or spawn patterns, anything, each of them is going to have an ID. But if you instance multiple ones, it might have problems because um, all of those nodes here are going to have the same ID. Um, it might not cause an error, but it might not um, give you the expected result. Uh, but you can change uh, the ID uh, dynamically in the enter tree function. Um, so for example, equals, I change it to two. And now if I print the ID, it should tell me yeah, of course it gives me an error because uh, the ID isn't one anymore, so I can use that. But, uh, but you see it changed um, the ID. So you can use the enter tree function to change uh, um, the ID of your nodes. It only works in the enter tree function, so be aware of that. Um, yeah, the reset function is important too. If you change your scene, for example, you go from level one to level two, you're gonna have to call the reset function uh, when you change the scene, um, or else uh, all the IDs might get mixed up or just the, the stay in memory, and you don't want that for optimization, uh, but it can cause problems too, so call reset and everything is gonna um, work after that. If you want to get a resource, you can just uh, call this function. So of course, um, this function for a spawner, but you have uh, for the trigger, instance, bullet, container, uh, everything that uses uh, uh, a reference. And yeah, also those ones. Uh, those functions are called uh, when the bullet interact collides uh, with something. Um, so if you want to give it custom uh, behavior uh, that's uh, specific to your game, uh, you have to write it here. So that's when it collides an area, that's when it collides a body. Uh, and you can add whatever you want. So it's very important to remember also that bullets uh, aren't nodes. Um, so it's not uh, instantiating uh, nodes. It's uh, a little bit more complicated than that. It's gonna act like a node, but it's not really a node. Uh, but you can add groups to uh, the bullet if you need it. So that's it for the basics of Bullet of Hell. If you want more videos to cover everything because uh, there's a lot going on in this plugin, so it would take hours to cover every little thing. But if you want more tutorials, uh, you can write down what you want in the comments and hit the like button. Subscribe to get notified when a new tutorial drops. Maybe you'll be also interested in checking um, my other plugins. Uh, I have a bunch of them, especially this plugin, Rotor Node, um, which has actually been requested by one of the user or of the Bullet Hell plugin to get mm, better rotations, or the Super Spectre, which is an improvement to the, to the Godot Inspector. Uh, I use it all the time, especially when using the Bullet Hell plugin. So anyway, comment what you want. If you have questions, you can join my, my Discord server. I'm, I always answer the questions. And please like and subscribe to show your support. Bye.